Today's episode isn't a shop my stash. This is when we shop the at Jenny's Place studio to try and find some leftover projects or just things I've picked up from the dollar store, the craft stores or thrift stores along the way and I just haven't done anything with them. It's always a good idea to shop your own stuff because this way you can save yourself money. It expands your creativity and it gets the junk out of your craft room, leaving more room for new supplies. We're going to use some half finished projects that, that I that I either got bored with or decided I didn't like the way they were turning out and some supplies that I bought from Dollar Tree last year. And we're gonna use these supplies to create beautiful, one-of-a-kind spring decor pieces. The best part, these are all ideas that you could also easily replicate and recreate. This first DIY, I'm going to use a cheese board that I bought from Dollar Store a while back that I had painted black stripes on the handle and then ended up not liking the look. So I'm gonna go in with some Art Minds antiquing wax and I'm going to apply a nice thick coat on the front and then also on the back and on the sides of this cheese board and then I'm just gonna let that rest and cure overnight. In my fabric stash, I had this beautiful material. They were curtains that had this gorgeous detailing at the top, and I thought that this would work perfectly with the color of the cheese board. Just place the fabric over top of the cheese board and cut out enough of the material so that I could just comfortably wrap it around to the back of the board. Then using a hot glue gun, I simply folded the bottom over and gently press that into place. Then I folded the side up so that I formed a little flap. Now I'm gonna be completely honest here. Full disclosure, I am not good at folding things. So if you're looking at me going, girl, there are so many easier and simpler ways to do this, you're probably right. I'm just gonna give it to you. You're probably right. But this is how I did it. I just kept folding it over gently, pushing it down with the hot glue, adding hot glue where I thought it was needed so that I ended up with a nice straight line with the fabric in the front and a little pocket. Felt like the hole at the top looked a little bare, so I went in with some thick twine rope that I'd bought from the dollar store, and I just tied that around, gave it a little knot, and then just let the ends sort of hang. Then to give the whole piece a little pop of color, I used some of those Dollar Tree faux lavender picks that you can get and then cut them down to size. And then I just simply slid these into the front pocket and arranged it so it looked full and pretty. And there you go. Tell me, what do you think? For this next DIY, I had this pizza pan that I bought from Dollar Tree that I had spray painted black. I had a plan for it for Christmas time and just never got around to it. So I decided to still give it the same treatment, which was to give it several coats of white chalk paint and allow it to dry in between coats. And then I went into Canva and created this printable that is in my library and I cut it out on my Cricut machine, carefully peeling the vinyl away from the backing and then weeding it so that I ended up with this absolutely adorable Peter Rabbit inspired decal. Using transfer tape, carefully burnish the transfer tape onto your decal using your Cricut scraper, making sure to press down on all those little tiny bits, the periods, the tiny letters. Flip your Cricut vinyl over and then burnish it on the back as well. This will help to make sure that the decal adheres to the transfer tape. Then carefully Fully center it onto the pizza pan, lightly pressing it down with your fingers and then using your Cricut scraper, push out the vinyl so that it sticks nice and flat. Work around the outside edges first so that you get everything in place and then work on the center images. Making sure again to really push down on those details, that you get every little piece. Then using a damp rag or face cloth, wet distress your pizza pan along any of the 
edges and any other area where you think maybe you want a little bit of wear and tear. And there you go, another Shop Your Stash DIY that I think turned out fantastic. Okay, for this next DIY, I had these carrots from Dollar Tree last year, just hanging around my craft room, and I decided to give each of them a different makeover. So for the first one, you wanna start by popping off the head, and then you're gonna to wanna to grab your hot glue gun and just give it a little dab of hot glue at the top, and then add your twine. You're going to wanna to wrap the twine around the tip of the carrot, carefully adding small dollops of hot glue as you go until you reach the point in which you can just start wrapping that twine around and around the carrot. Then when you start to reach the top end of the carrot, that's when you want to start reapplying those little dollops of hot glue because you want the twine to stay in place and not unravel when you are done wrapping it with the twine. So just again, keep adding small dollops of hot glue and wrap that twine around and around the top of the carrot, leaving just enough space at the top to re-adhere that carrot top. Now you may find that those repeated dollops of hot glue might have left a little bit of glue, hot glue residue behind. Trick for that, light a match or a lighter, I didn't have a lighter on hand, and gently rub the flame along the twine, especially focusing around where the hot glue is. Now you could just leave the carrot wrapped in the twine like this, or if you want for a finishing touch, I just went in with a little bit of embroidery thread in orange orange and wrapped that around the carrot and then hot glued it into place. Now you could just re-adhere that carrot top to the top of the carrot and that would work fine, but I want to schnazz these up a little bit. So start by hot gluing those carrot tops to the top of the carrot again and then holding it securely in place. Grab a wooden skewer or something sharp and poke a hole through the top of the carrot top and into the foam. Head to Dollar Tree and find some greenery that kind of resembles that of a carrot. Cut down a bunch of it in one stem and then stick that stem into the hole made from the skewer into the carrot. For the second carrot DIY, you're going to want some decorative burlap. I found this striped burlap that I just thought would work really well for this look. So again, just pop off the top of the carrot, cut off a strip of the burlap about eight inches wide. Place your carrot on the bottom corner of the burlap, add a little dollop of hot glue to the carrot, and then adhere the corner of the burlap to that glue, and then just roll the carrot into the burlap, adding hot glue as you go, keeping it in place, and then just keep rolling it until you can't see any of the orange underneath. Once this is achieved, cut off any of the leftover burlap on the angle, and then again, using your hot glue gun, put a straight line of hot glue down the center of the carrot, and adhere the end of the edge of the burlap roll to the rest of the carrot, and gently press it into place. Cover the tip of the carrot, just apply a generous dollop of hot glue to that tip and then fold the burlap over onto the carrot, pressing it into place until you end up with a nice tight tip. Cut off any of the excess burlap roll at the top so that you get a nice straight line. Then grab that wooden skewer again and stick a hole into the top of your carrot. Stick one of those Dollar Tree picks into the hole and add a bunch of hot glue. And then bunch the burlap roll around the top of the carrot and tie it into place with a piece of twine. And there you go, not one but two different ways that you can upcycle those cheap looking Dollar Tree carrots. For this next DIY, we're going to use this wooden crate that I had already upcycled from the thrift store. I had some leftover cardboard from another DIY that I had cut down to size so that it would fit inside the crate, and then I painted it with some Art Minds antiquing wax, and then distress paint it with a bit of white, and then added those cardboard pieces into each side of the wooden crate, and then popped in some floral foam. Now, that way you couldn't see through this crate, which meant that I could put in the floral foam 
film and you wouldn't be able to see it. And I loved this crate because I loved the detailing and the white distressed paint just made that detailing pop. Now because it's spring and this crate is white, I wanted to go with nice, bright, vibrant colored faux blooms. So I collected a bunch of different bright pink peonies, roses, there's, what else is there? There's uh, hydrangeas and I think there's even a few dahlias thrown in which, and I just started to arrange the flowers working with the taller stems in the middle and then working my way down on the sides so that it kind of tapered off. go. I think that this arrangement just looks so delicate and beautiful and pretty and it was so cheap to make because I used all the stuff I already had in my stash. I got this beautiful and ornate birdcage a while back from a family member and it is just divine. I have added a bit of antiquing wax to it. I love the old rusty look and it just sort of let those ornate elements pop a little bit more. So we're just going to open up the top of this birdcage. It actually has um, a door in the front that also opens but I think for the most part we're going to leave that closed. So we're just going to lift up that top lid and to this I'm just going to add a little pedestal from Dollar Tree. I also have this ceramic bird that I got from the dollar store that I had painted out with some baking soda paint. Next I'm going to add this little stone vase. I'm not even quite sure what this is for. Candle holder? I, I don't know but it's going to hold this greenery quite nicely and that's just going to add a little bit pop of color. And to that green we're going to work off of that with a little bit of these robin egg that I had painted. They're foam eggs that I painted in teal. And there you go. It is a beautiful display that costs almost no money to make. In fact, I had all these supplies at home, so really it didn't cost me a thing. Well, that's it for today's spring DIYs. If you enjoyed those, make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up. If you hit the notification bell, it'll let you know the next time I upload. Oh, and you might enjoy these.